almost a thousand points. We call this a capitulation. They're going to probably halt trading. We can't stop the selling. Structured. Uh, there is great difficulty for the commission, I think, in keeping track of how, the, how these algorithms are working, uh, what the plans are, uh, what to do in times of great stress. And I have no way of suggesting a solution except for one, and it's not a very practical one, it's just get more money. Go to Congress and, and, and labor with Congress about the need to have ITI. Uh, yeah, the flash crash was an event for me that it was a defining event. There was no way for me to ignore that. I was on the high frequency trading floor. Things were going pretty normal. I mean, as normal as it can be, the market was down two and a half percent. It was a, riots on TV in Greece, and every time they showed the, the, the Greek riots, the market would drop a little. Um, and I remember looking up, and just like every trading floor, CNBC is on, and I saw that the Dow Jones had dropped another 100 points. And I said, okay, whatever, and kept, kept working. Um, a minute later, I look up, and it had dropped another 100 points. I, I got up off my desk, and I walk over to the futures traders, and they're just scrambling all over the place. They don't know what's going on. They had huge amounts of, of orders in the market. Everything's going crazy. Market started dropping another 100 points. And the CEO of the firm comes running out onto the floor, and he's just screaming, pull everything, pull everything. So they just, they're just hitting it, hitting buttons, turning everything off, everything off. And so we're all sort of huddled around these two screens. And the one screen is, we're looking at the book. So it's the, the futures market. You have a set of people that are willing to buy and a set of people that are willing to sell. This is the market. And as we're watching the screen, the orders, they start, they start drifting, like orders are being canceled. And then they start drifting more. And then they start to go off the screen. And then they were gone. There was nothing. There was no market. For, for moments, for seconds, there was no market. And we're all just sitting there, and you're staring into oblivion. You're like, you have no idea what is about to happen. I was thinking that something terrible has just happened. Something indescribably horrible just happened. The market was gone. So I got to tell you, if we have a significant market event where we don't have the information we need as to exactly what happened, if we have another flash crash type situation and we don't have the cat in place, we're going to regret it. Um, because so far, Congress has given the SEC the flexibility to work with the market. Um, but the way you get laws that don't give flexibility is by taking too long to use that flexibility and get things stood up. So I agree with you, Tom, that we did that, that it's sensible to do it on a phased basis. Look, in the middle of COVID, can we expect people to make the deadlines they said they'd make pre-COVID? No. No, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be an unreasonable guy. I do think as a marketplace, we'll be happier and the long run health of the market will be better if we get that thing stood up as soon as we can. So Kat really, you know, as I'm sure most people are familiar with, came out of SEC rulemaking um, around the flash crash and the inability at that time for regulators to efficiently um, and quickly access trading data across all of the various markets in, in the U.S. So Kat each of the um, securities, national securities exchanges, equities and options, um, the trade reporting facilities that FINRA operates for over-the-counter transactions, um, and then of course, all of the order data from broker dealers um, from the time they receive an order until the time it is ultimately executed by the broker dealer or routed to an exchange for execution and brings that all into a central database. So regulators, the SEC and the SROs um, can access that data and have a holistic view of the U.S. securities markets. So a couple of big sort of game changers that what, because um, currently regulators have a significant amount of data. FINRA, of course, has operated its OATS system for many years, which has broker-dealer data um, about equity orders, but not options orders. 
Um, of course, the um, FINRA does cross-market surveillance under RSAs for um, like 99% now, 100% of the equities markets and a big portion of the options market. So they regulators do have this information, have had this information for quite some time, but CAT brings it all together, all options data, all equities data, all in one place. And then in addition to that, it brings in information about customer and account data that hasn't been there that one of the real game changers is that allows regulators, the SEC, to identify the trading activity of a single customer of all markets in the US. Um, so that's really the game changer of CAT to allow them to track a single uh, trader customer across all markets that they're trading on. Sure. sure. So FINRA CAT uses AWS, um, and that's where we run all the processing, the storage. Um, Primarily, one of the, the biggest reasons is the scalability. The data footprint, as everyone I'm sure can imagine, and um, we, we, we publish stats on this weekly on the broker-dealer side, the volumes are very, very large. Um, the exchanges and the participants themselves and FINRA, FINRA CRF, like I said, have been reporting since November of 2018. That volume is a couple hundred billion records a day. It has it peaked earlier this year with all the volatility. We exceeded 400 billion records on a single day. So we went from you know, half of that to 400 billion in, you know, days, about a week. So you have to be able, the, the scalability factor is um, paramount. So the cloud lets us do that. And then, of course, when the volume goes back down to normal, then you can scale back down. Um, and just, the, um, you know, our, our partner, AWS, and the different kinds of, you um, tools that they have that allow you to work with very, very large footprints. Broker dealers, we have broker dealers that use AWS Direct Connect, can transmit directly into the, um, through an AWS account to ours. Uh, so there's um, a lot of benefits and just for a project like this with the, the footprint that we're dealing with, the broker dealer volume is about 15 billion a day. Um, you really need a highly scalable solution and, and that's what AWS provides. So all this is in AWS, it's been that way since 2014. And the scale that we have at our, at our um, available, available for us it just was not previously possible. So we began this journey to AWS and the public cloud in 2012. And we started by moving our most critical applications, the market surveillance, the big data applications first, because they had capacity limitations in our data centers. And we did this move to AWS in, in conjunction with automating our DevOps, becoming agile, and standardizing on open source big data software. And what's interesting about this is that our net costs have actually decreased, which, you know, wh where does that happen, right? So let's look at some of the other benefits. Some of the other benefits are analytics. We've got immense data scale, We've moved our queries from looking at data puddles that had to be staged and set up by IT to ma massive data lakes. And so now queries that used to take days or hours now take minutes and seconds. Security is superior to what it was before. With micro-segmentation, encryption, um, the monitoring and alerting activities, among many other things, we just couldn't economically afford to do the data protection that is available in the cloud. Uh, innovation, very important. We did it right. You have to architect your applications in AWS to be cloud enabled. And in doing so, you can automatically refresh your applications and modernize them to keep up with the evolving and innovating services that are available in the cloud. And this allows you to continuously improve price performance and basically be mark to market to Moore's law. And then lastly, reliability. The reliability, you know, given that our apps were designed to run across multiple um, availability zones, it's a ubiquitously come up every morning in different data centers and av av availability zones gives you 
far greater uh, diversity and protection against uh, natural disasters. Essentially, our disaster recovery is tested daily in this regard. We've got a broad use of AWS services, and we're continuing uh, to work with AWS to keep this list growing. Specific examples in the area of big data analytics would be S3 for industry data ingestion, Lambda and EC2 for data validation, EMR and S3 for storage functionality, and lastly, Elasticsearch and SageMaker for big data analytics. So why does this flywheel matter? Well, you know, there's, you know, let me give you one great example of why being part of this flywheel allows us to do things that just weren't possible previously. On May 6, 2010, uh, we had our flash crash. The Dow plunged 1,000 points. It was caused by illegal spoofing trading algorithms. Existing regulatory surveillance tools and data weren't able to quickly get to the root cause of the problem. So the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, proposed a new surveillance platform called the Consolidated Audit Trail uh, to address this uh, shortcoming. Uh, we plan to leverage machine learning, AI, natural language processing, deep learning, neural networks to become a more effective and efficient regulator, to more quickly find market manipulators, fraudsters, insider traders, and just bad brokers. This industry has been talking and dreaming about AI for decades, but with the virtual infinite compute and processing and, and storage scale at continuously commoditized and lower cost, it's now become a reality and machine learning is here. So examples of where we can put machine learning to work specifically at FINRA include anomaly detection, finding the needle in the haystack with massive data, and, and um, minimizing false positives that result from our uh, surveillances. And the results are to become a, a better and faster at catching the bad, the bad guys in our industry.